spotter is really crucial for competition drifting. This is a guy that you're gonna say, like, you're gonna bounce all your ideas off of. He's gonna give you all your feedback on how you're running. And, and really, he's your, like, eyes outside the car. Because in tandem, inside the car, like, you, first off, you're a little bit busy driving the car. And uh, secondly, you only have your perspective. You don't know how well you got chased, you know what I mean? How, what kind of pressure was applied, what the judges are saying, all those kind of things. So after a, a lead run, the first thing you do is you get your spider, like, how did that go? Especially if you lead first, you're like, what happened? What are we looking at? How hard do I have to push next run? So that's really the most important thing for a spotter. But besides that, there's a spotter. I have my spotter come to the driver's meeting, um, try to understand exactly what the judges are looking for on each track so that we can come up with a plan on like what our strengths are, where we look really good. And then throughout practice, he'll watch and give me feedback like, hey, you're doing this, but the guys that are really killing it are doing that. You might think you're like crushing the track and come to find out, oh, no one, they don't want you pushing out that far, especially in practice when things aren't fully uh, defined by the judges. He'll go, oh man, people are doing this and it looks way, it looks really cool and I think that's what they're going to want. So it's, it's really all about eyes outside the car and giving you constant feedback and constant communication. Yeah, the important part is definitely an element of chemistry. It's, it's really, it's that X factor, if you want to call it that. It's, this is a relationship after all. And you, you got to be able to understand without necessarily talking and I think we're, we're on to that now. You know, I know what Steph's thinking and he knows what I'm thinking and we don't necessarily have to, to talk a lot in order to get the spotting going. He can just give me small hints, small tips along the way and just some minor corrections, so to speak, and that's all that's needed. Uh, from what I've noticed in this drifting industry with the relationship between the driver and the spotter is that most of the time they're, they started off as friends. You know, they started off as friends going to the racetrack to drift and they were just kind of hanging out and their friends would watch them drive. And that relationship just started to grow stronger and stronger. And of course, if you have someone watching your, your runs every single lap and they understand how you drive and understand the car's capabilities, it's just natural to have that person become your, your spotter in Formula D. So, um, for what I've witnessed a lot of people you know, starting off as friends and then making it here to Formula D. Uh, at this point in this game, I don't think I know of any driver that doesn't have a spotter. I mean, it's extremely, extremely helpful and important to have a spotter at this level of driving. I mean, our spotters will pick out like, you know, you're, you're a couple millimeters from the wall. And some, some things that we, we can only assume they know for a fact because they're watching from the outside. was kind of a weird a weird one for me. I talked to my spotter and I'm like, hey, what's the plan with this guy? What's he look like? And he said, according to the numbers, he's the fastest qualifier here. 87 miles an hour almost in the first turn, which was nine miles an hour quicker than we were. So I talked to him, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna jump to the light, give you, basically gives me like a, a, a car to, and you go and, and you know, we'll, we should hit that turn together. Because the idea is the drivers make adjustments to hit that turn together. The light broke and we got hand signals halfway down with the hand I went um, and he didn't really go basically I was I would have been able to just smoke him uh, and once we'd hit the you know point of no return cone which is when you can turn around and get restarted is when he took off so it was really weird it put, a, a, put me in a big disadvantage and a huge gap and uh, I wound up just hauling on the bank trying to close it I wound up blowing off the back of the bank again so I was pretty bummed trying to make sure we had a spectacular lead run. I ran a pretty decent run, I felt really good about it. We were high on the bank and he was having trouble following and I guess he straightened up a little bit. And uh, we were hoping for one more time. And I, I expressed to my spotter like, hey, that was a really wonky first run. You should, should let them know what happened. So we talked to the judges, we wound up getting the decision against us, but it's a bummer to get knocked out in 32. I've done well here in the past and it's one of my favorite tracks. Top 16 pitted us against uh, Ryan Cotto, one of the younger guys, he's been doing great. Has a new turbo setup for this weekend, a lot of power. And, and we knew that was uh, it was going to be a tough pick because he was online, consistent, and uh, just hard to follow in certain 
parts of the track. So I went in, got some place in, uh, we had a decent lead run, slight advantage. But somehow when I shifted up into third in the last run, it didn't fully engage. And I had a slight wobble and a slight straining out on, on the last turn of my lead. Uh, so we knew it was a close call after the first battle and that we really needed to be, you know, putting on our best show for the, for the follow. -up. So I went out there chasing him down. We had a great uh, follow in him um, in the bank. Came down from the bank into the infield and he tapped the wall and almost straightened out. And I caught me off guard a little bit. Uh, and uh, in the last turn, I somehow put two tires uh, across the yellow line, which basically meant I had a couple of tires off. Um, and I came in and we found a, a tight spot in the steering. I basically lost power steering. But I'm not sure if that affected the outcome and I uh, I put the tires off regardless so it's tough luck for us this weekend uh, we're poised to come back stronger than ever in Las Vegas And I actually haven't been watching his runs all weekend, but uh, he was fast on the bank. But at this point, my engine, unfortunately, had a little uh, mishap and it was starting to misfire a little bit. He took me out in the top four after one more time. And, uh, so we were matched up against Reese Millen, another Hunt Pick teammate for the third place consolation round. Unfortunately, at this point, um, my motor was probably down maybe 100 horsepower. So going into the bank is already really shaky and. Uh, uh, the first lap I led, uh, I did the best I could to keep a qualifying style lap, and I did. As soon as we switched, um, my car just took a complete dump. And on the bank, I strained out because of a uh, loss of power, and I thought I was actually going to wob the car. But uh, thankfully, uh, the car actually really ha handles really well, so I avoided that accident. But um, no, it's a little sour that we finished in fourth place. We were so close to the podium. In fact, we had the chance to go on top of the podium twice in the top four and in the consolation round. But uh, fourth place is the best result we've had so far with the San Andreas FRS. So we're extremely pleased with our performance this weekend. And uh, now we know what changes that need to be made before uh, Vegas. So make those necessary changes, hopefully come back with another 100 to 150 horsepower and uh, try to finish off Vegas with a bang. <laughs>